Is this our cat Dishka? Or is this Dishka? Let's make that our Arduino can find it out. Then cats or other animals can be part of our home automation. Or maybe you want to get chipped yourself? Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. We could use image recognition to distinguish two cats, but sometimes it's even hard for me because they look very similar. Fortunately, cats here in Switzerland often carry a chip under their skin. In my video about RFIDs, I wanted to read these chips, but it did not work with the regular readers. This is why I give it a second try. Maybe you want to first watch video number 223 and number 235 about RFID basics before you continue. You find a link in the upper right corner. Anyway, we have three sorts of RFID systems. LF, HF and UHF. Animal tags are LF tags. But unfortunately, they do not work on 125 kHz as all others. They work on 134.2 kHz, which does not seem to be a big difference. But none of the 125 kHz readers was able to read Dishka's tag. And she was mad at me for quite some time after all these experiments. Fortunately, we can buy dedicated readers for this frequency. Unfortunately, they are much more expensive than regular RFID readers, but still much cheaper than ready-made readers for doctors or automatic cat doors. I have three modules with different antennas in my test. The cheapest is very small and hard to solder. It is made to be integrated into such a professional reader. It is the most affordable and its antenna is also very tiny. The second one is a little bigger and its antenna is also bigger. It costs around $25. And the last one is the biggest with the biggest antenna. It is sold as long range module and costs just below $40 including shipping. All can read the ISO 11784 and 85 FDXB standard tags. All modules do not support HDX which is half duplex mode. So we can concentrate on FDX, full duplex. Other than with the TPM sensors of the last video, the protocol here is open and standardized. Unfortunately, we do not have to deal with the decoding of the original signal because all readers do that and offer a standard TTL interface which runs at 9600 volt. However, each of the modules uses a different format and it was challenging to find the right information and understand it. Especially this small bugger did not do anything when I finally managed to solder thin wires to these small pads. Fortunately, I have some nice 30 AWG wires from my wire wrapping video in my lab. They perfectly fit this purpose. Only after I found its interface description, I found out that it waits for a command to start the scan. The others begin to scan as soon as they get power. To send a command to the small reader, I used RealTerm and an FTDI module. For my tests, I used two sorts of tags. One which can be implanted under the skin and another which usually is attached to the ear of bigger animals like our cows here in Switzerland. As you see, it could also be used to tag punks. The small one is used for cats and sometimes also for humans, as the guy I met at Supercon. He and his wife are also tagged and use it for home automation. Another colleague used it as a key for his car. So far, I did not inject one. But if I get older and lose my keys more often, I'm sure my wife will inject me one. Most of our cats are chipped to find the owner if they are lost. To avoid discussions, Dishka comes from an asylum and I did not chip her just for this video. But because of her chip, this time she has to work hard for her food. She will be the guinea pig in this scientific research. So this is the first time we do animal testing on this channel. Later more. I have all readers on my bench and connected the green channel of my oscilloscope to the outputs of the modules. Like that we immediately see 
when a signal is detected. First, we try a standard 125 kHz RFID tag. It is not recognized by all modules. RFID chips have no batteries and the energy for the chips comes from the reader via air. We should see a field when the scanner is waiting for a tag. To do so, I use another coil connected to the yellow channel. And really, we see the 134.2 kHz signal. It seems to be a little off. Its peak-to-peak -peak voltage is around 13 volts, which does not mean a lot for now. If we place the big tag across the antenna, we see that modulation is generated. The tag opens and closes its antenna and so creates feedback which can be analyzed by the reader, which then sends the code via the serial connection to an MCU. You see this signal on the green channel. The code mainly consists of an ID and a country code. Like that we can have a look where the animals were chipped. If I send BB or 187 to the module, it stops to transmit and its power hunger is smaller. It drops from 40 to 17 milliampere, which we still would not call deep sleep. The resulting code is only 8 byte long. The first two are the country code and the next five bytes are the ID. The last is the checksum. If I do all the calculations, I get the country code 999, which is not defined, and the number which is printed on the tag. I would call this a success. Now let's check how far the tags can be read. The big tag can be detected about five centimeters away. And we see here something which is quite remarkable. The orientation of the tag matters a lot. If I turn the tag, the distance diminishes to nearly zero. It is quite clear that if the coil orientation in the tag is parallel to the reader coil, the range is biggest. We can demonstrate this effect by turning the coil connected to the oscilloscope. At 90 degrees, we nearly get no signal. The small attack can be read in a range of about 3 cm. By the way, if I switch a second reader on in the vicinity, the reader does no more work. You see, they are susceptible to interferences, also from switching power supplies, for example. All in all, this module can be used for a reader if the animal is not too dangerous and you can go very close to the tag. Like a vet with this reader. It's useless for animal automation, where we need larger distances. Let's try the next one. It runs on 5 volts and uses around 30 mA. We measure a peak-to-peak -peak voltage of about 15 volts, comparable to the one before. Its range is a little longer, but not a lot. Maybe also because the area covered by the antenna is bigger. The third one is the most expensive. It runs off 9 volts and has a warning because of high voltage printed on the back. So this one must be good. Costly and a warning. Two features the other two did not have. Let's check. The first impression is already good. The peak to peak voltage is more than 30 volts. With the same antenna connected to the oscilloscope as before. So this reader has a much higher power. It also consumes 110 mA, more than two times the current of the others. The detection range is about 20 cm for the big tag and 11 cm for the small one. Much better. This module is not only expensive, it is in a different league. In the tests before it was quite clear that the maximum sensitivity is in the plane of the coil. So I create a coil with a diameter of around 20 cm which should be okay for Dishka even after her dinner. So let's crank up the 3D printer and create a loop for our animal test. I once bought a 20 meter spool of 0.4 mm enameled copper wire. To be sure, I wind the whole length on the newly created spool and connect it to the reader. It draws much less than 110 mA and does not detect tags. My transistor tester shows 0.82 millihenry and the original antenna only had 0.55 millihenry. 
so I unwind wire till the device starts to work. The Arduino sketch reads the message coming from the reader, checks the checksum and illuminates a LED if it's Dishka. For all other cats, the red LED will go on. Such a coil may be smaller for your cat, could be used for an automatic cat door or in front of a feeder. Now we have to get Dishka's tag number. Its country code is 756 for Switzerland, so she is really Swiss. As in all scientific experiments, let's first test it with a placebo, the cow tag. Yes, it works. And the smaller chip? It works too. Now the first cat. You can guess if it's Genie or Dishka. Obviously, it's Genie. She is not chipped. Maybe she is too old. The next is Dishka. And I invited another cat to the test. We call him Nero. He is shy but always hungry. And he is chipped, but with the wrong number. Home automation for animals is ready to take off. Now we can add MQTT and connect it to our broker. Maybe you want to share your ideas on what you could automate around your animals. Feel free to comment. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You will find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.